It is December 6, 2007, and we are interviewing Joseph Frenzel at 2 p.m. in the New Scotland Historical Association near Albany, New York. He served in the United States Army from January 13, 1943 to October 31, 1945. Kenneth and June Hunter are conducting this interview. Please tell us your full name and when and where you were born. My name is Joseph George Frenzel. I was born in Albany, New York, and I was drafted from Albany, New York. And from there, I went to Camp Upton on Long Island, where we were processed and very cold there. A lot of boys froze in the tents there and everything. Then we were shipped out. We didn't know where we were going. <coughs> Excuse me. We thought maybe California because we didn't know. We wound up in Texas. Camp, camp, jeez, I can't think of it. Was it's it? okay, you were in Texas. Camp Maxi, Texas, right. Because we had so many other camps. And we dug our training there. We went on maneuvers in uh, Louisiana, which was a muddy place. And we went to, went to camp, a couple other camps. And first, you know, we shipped out. Now, before you were shipped out, tell us what kind of work you were being trained for uh, before you went um, right after basic, what kind of schooling did you have, if any? No, I didn't have any special schooling at all. I just was put, they put you where they thought they needed you because some fellas were cooks and they made them mechanics. There was just a, where they needed the fellas, that's where they put them. And we, everyone just seemed to break in of what they had to do, you know. I was. I was put in the wire section because I had past experience with wire and things like that. I drove a, a small weapons carrier truck with a 155 caliber machine gun on it. We laid the wire for communication to other batteries, battalions, and, and so forth. Had lots of problems at night with tanks and whatever messing up our lines and lots of times they had to go out in the middle of the night, dark, and try to find your ends, which ends, to match them up to get the communication through. But uh, So this was all new training to you. Now you started out working at uh, the New York Central Railroad, yes. was it? Did yeah. anything you did there help yes, you? Yes, I was an electrical apprentice, okay. electrician. And I come out of service, I finished my electrical a four years apprenticeship at the New York Central Railroad. Okay, now back to our uh, training. Now you said you went to Texas. Yes, and well, we trained uh, in Texas also. And what you know, were you trained on in? On maneuvers and stuff like that, yeah. That's the way I trained on myself. Yeah. Probably physical fitness yes. as well. Oh, yes. yes. Weapons training, familiarization. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, because we all learn practically everybody's job just in case something would happen that we could fill in. We were, you know, pretty much familiar with everyone's job in the service, you know. So then we finished there, and we, was, we were shipped out, went over on the Queen Elizabeth. Oh, you had a luxurious birth, oh, I yes. would assume. <laughs> anyway, it was 14,000, 14,000 soldiers on the ship, including Joe Lewis. Oh. We, we could go any place on the ship because of our gun experience. We took care of the guns on the ship going over. We got out of, out of New York quite a ways. We test fired, and on the way over, we passed convoys. We thought they were anchored out there because we were alone because we were much faster. 
But we got out of ways and we ran into a pack of submarines and the ship had to go 500 miles off course. But then we got straightened out and past Iceland. We went in, in the cove between Scotland and Ireland. We were loaded into little boats into Scotland. We're down into England. We slept in different homes and myself, I slept in the rear of a church on a little with a straw mattress. Well now if you were on this ship, did the Queen Elizabeth, did that sail a little smoother than some of the others? Or oh yes. Yeah, you were yes. a little it luckier. A, because the one we come home on wasn't that great. And you mentioned Joe Lewis. He was yes. a famous boxer. Yes. Yes, he was on the ship. And so... Uh, so then we done, we went in, we was in England for, I forget how long we were. Went on Wales, um, doing some maneuvers in Wales. Mm -hmm. And we, we went, we got loaded up down at the dock down there on the LSTs to cross the channel. Now an LST for people who don't understand. Oh, that's a landing ship tank. Is that landing ship tank with the the front drops down? You go out and take a bath in the water. <laughs> and do they uh, usually have the water so you can stand up and walk, yes, or do you this, have to swim? This would pretty much. You pretty, pretty much. much. Oh, sure. But you know, the vehicle and everything was was uh, equipped, you know, to take care of it. And also our our uh, uniforms were impregnated for case of gas attack or anything like that. And we got out of ways. They just got this our LST loaded at the dock. Just got everything up on top deck and the elevator broke and fell down through to the bottom. Luckily, no one got hurt. So then we had to go out to a mothership, which they'd done the repairs, because we had to have it repaired before we could land to take the stuff off the top deck, deck to go on shore with. Well, when we landed, then we went on in on Normandy. Now, before uh, we get into the kinds of action that you participated in in uh, Europe, there's a picture of you here on a table showing you in the uniform, not the kind of uniform that you would wear in combat. No. All right. I don't have one at the time. You know? That was taken in, in the United States. Prior to your Just departure. Before shipping out. Right. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my Eisenhower jacket that we received later on. You know? <coughs> So then we went in over there, Normandy, and we went up and kind of bivouacked. And it was kind of rough because the Germans had air superiority. We would get bombed nights. They would drop these flares, photo flares. They could see anything that was underneath. Of course, we was in the hedge growth and that there. And they, we got bombed. We lost some equipment there. Some men, we lost some men there. And during the day, we would get strafed in daylight, you know. And then we went on and we hit all these places. Our outfit was more or less, we weren't attached to a division. And wherever they needed protection on a drive or whatever they were pursuing, we would protect them all the while. We would even dig in along with close to infantry to cover them while they made their drives and everything and also cover tanks and whatever, you know. So as we weren't attached to one division, we were needed all over. That's how come we were at so many different places. They needed us to cover them. And the worst part of it was being us not <coughs> uh, attached to a division or anything, we never received our recommendation, which we should have, like like the battalions, the, I mean, excuse me, like uh, the big ones, stuff, you know? We never received any anything at all. 
So all we got was uh, what we have. Now the invasion at, at landing there, as you came over, was it a surprise to the enemy? Was there <laughs> no, a bombardment the, from them? The beach was already taken. You know what I mean? Pretty well, you were a second pretty wave. Pretty well secure. Yes, right. Yes. So that we just went on, right on through. We was at the Battle of the Bulge with, with beautiful weather. Lots of snow, very cold. Lots of skiing. Yeah, lots of skiing. And you couldn't, there was no place to keep warm, really. Fellas laid on top of vehicles and scraped the snow aside and everything. And uh, it, was, it was pretty rough there, you know. And weather-wise, with some of us from the north didn't mind it too much, but some of these, these southern boys, they couldn't cut it too well, you know. And also, in France, we also had hit the uh, rainy season, which was very tough. Well, what was uh, at the Battle of the Bulge there? What was it like? Uh, were you adequately uh, provided with the warm clothing? Did you have we meals? What about ammunition supplies? Our, you know what our meals were? K rations. Oh. What are K rations? Tell us K about rations. It. I have a whole set of them home. They're only about the size of a cracker jack box. And it might have a little can of eggs and bacon in it and a few little cereal and a few little other things. That's all it was. Candy bar, a couple of crackers, and that was it. Your lunch was basically the same. Your supper was basically the same. But that's what we had. It was very seldom that we ever seen K rice. I mean, sea rations, excuse me. But we survived. What's the difference yeah. between K rations and sea is rations? Is things that they can cook up a little bit and everything for you, you know? But so you had cold meals and you must have been fairly hungry quite often. Well, we. Uh, or your mind was so occupied that you didn't get it. Well, hungry. when we would get a little break, we would hit. Like I say, a break. We never got a really a break because you get these divisions. After they make a drive, normally they will pull back and reorganize. You know, but we took a little beating, like I said, with the bombs and that, because I have quite a few things, accommodations from the generals. If anyone would like to see them. Uh, for what we done and everything, but we still didn't get the recognition that we really should have had, you know. Tell us a little. Now, the Battle of the Bulge is very famous, and many, many people lost their lives in that. Yes, yes, they did. And tell us how you sort of became involved and what it was like. I well, know you said it was when cold. We, and when we got to where we were down in Saarbrücken, southern Germany. So we quick hightailed up there, bad weather, terrible traveling, to get up there to cover the one that was really involved right then, you know? Did you know it was going to be a very famous battle in the end? No, we no, did not. No, time. we did not. Did not know. And, you know, we spent time in Austria, Czechoslovakia, and uh, oh, Belgium, and we also hit Luxembourg, where our good buddy George Patton is buried, and my good buddy, which lost his life at the Bulge, is buried there also. I often wanted to go back, but my wife, I wouldn't go without her, and she won't fly, and she won't go on a boat. So I'm stuck here, <laughs> and we, uh, <clears throat> but we, we have a, would you like to hear about our chapter that we have? Well, we'll, well get, no, to we'll that, get to that, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Were there moments uh, in pauses during there when you had opportunities to recover, rest and relaxation? No, not much mm -hmm. at all. Like I told you, divisions, you know, because we would, after that, was taken care of, we would have to move to another area where something else was being 
pushed ahead. So we was covering all different divisions and tank outfits and whatever, you know, so. Now how many men were in your group? Did you stay pretty much with the same people or did they oh, change? Oh yes. But we got <coughs> fellows that killed or injured or whatever, we got, we got replacements, which was very green, which we didn't appreciate because the fellows you live with those years, you could tell them walking in the dark, you know? Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we would sooner have went without some greenhorns, as we would put it, you know? Now we've heard uh, during uh, the heavy fighting that the Germans would try to infiltrate the lines. Oh, yes. Did you have any opportunity to take any prisoners or have any occasions yes, when that some happened? Of, some of our not, our, not our battery I was in, our other batteries had gotten some, you know, it was A battery, B battery, and C battery, you know? And I, as I come back home here through the, our organization, I met two other fellows that were in my same battalion, but I never knew them all through what we went through. One was in, I was in A battery, Ed was in B battery, and Lee was in C battery, and we never knew one other, mm -hmm. you know? So it was nice, gives us things uh, to talk about, you yeah. know? <clears throat> How many uh, people were in your battery or group? Well, I don't know just how many, really. You know, mm -hmm. quite a few because you, you figure you got four guns and you got, uh, and like I said, going back to the rainy season in France, those guns are so heavy and everything. In the wet, we would have to leave some of them there. They couldn't get them back out. And rear echelon would get them out with tank maneuvers tank retrievers, excuse me, and bring them back up to us, you know. But at times we had to have, we fired so many rounds that we had to have tools replaced on some of the guns, you know, which is uh, just how many rounds offhand, I can't tell you. But getting down to quite an experience, I was, I was drafted, but I was willing to go to my country, and I would go again. Now, besides uh, having to do the usual combat activities with the rest of your bodies, you had a job to do electrical work uh, and so forth, telephone line work? Or? It's all we had was telephone. Okay, what to explain what you had to do. Yeah, well, that's all we do. We lay our wires out to our batteries, our, our head command, and other outfits that we could keep in communication for, because we had nothing but telephones to rely upon, you know? And uh, it wasn't the equipment they have today. If we had, like, helicopters in that war, we could have saved a lot of lives, you know? But today, they have much better equipment. Ours was very good considering of what we had, we had to make best use of it. The only thing, we we got held back once. We didn't, we shortage of the gasoline and like that. But I think the whole click to most of it was they wanted Russia to get in there first, you know? Mm -hmm. <coughs> So then where did you, did you have to dig trenches? Or oh, you... oh yes. Okay, tell us but about that. But in, in uh, Normandy, in France, there was a lot of hedge groves. What so, is a hedge grove? Well, it, it, they were so high, maybe four foot high, and there were all bushes on top of them, and there was just an exit out of them. That's just the way they had their land there. And they used, we used to dig a hole a slip trench in the side of it, you know, to get in, and even lots of places where you just dug a foxhole. It's, uh, it just seemed that you weren't worried unless your head was covered, 
that's all you're really worried about, you know? So, but it was tough digging at times, and you just so. had to make the best of it to protect yourself. Were there opportunities uh, to uh, take a bath? Uh, no, no. Long periods you're, of, uh, of oh discomfort. Yes. Oh, yes. You're still home. Helmet was one of your best buddies to wash in, do your laundry in when you got a chance. I can tell the truth now. A lot of my laundry, I done with gasoline, so it would dry quick. Because <laughs> we didn't have the clothing with us. We didn't have the winter clothing. I got a, I got a comforter out of a home that I stuffed in my sleeping bag to help me keep warm and everything. And that was, uh, you know, you just done the best you could. You traveled light in those you days. Know? While you were while you were in the battle battle conditions, the battles uh, ranged over holiday periods like Thanksgiving, Christmas, oh, yes. uh, New Year's, and so forth. What was the spirit of the men like at those times? Um, did you have religious services, the uh, services of a chaplain? Occasionally, not too often. What about meals, uh, holiday meals? Do they make an attempt to serve you? Uh, a th like no. say a Thanksgiving meal. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Good old C and K rations. Good old C and K rations. It was just another day of the job we had to do to get it over with and get home. You know. Now, did you see a lot of the devastation you must have in oh, Europe? Oh yes. What were, what did it look like over there? Well, pretty much blown apart. You know. I went up on <coughs> forward observation once and uh, with a lieutenant from Fort St. Michael in France and they wanted uh, a lot of Germans in this one building. They wanted to get them out of there. He called down for a fire on this building. Our boys. Laid them right on the dime. Our boys were very good on these cannons, I'm telling you. They could put them right on the dime. Them, them cannoneers worked darn hard, day and night, wrestling those big shells and all that, you know. And we were on the go so fast. When we had them on the run, old George had them going. These poor guys would have to set up maybe twice a day, all this work they went through. And first thing you know, it was out of range, pick up and go again, you know, which our projectiles were good, pretty active on 20 miles. So we could support these other outfits while they were doing their duty, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big history to me, and I never regret going. Did you have any contact with the German prisoners of war? Did oh, your yes. unit take any? Yes, I, well, our one battery got some, but uh, plenty of them was, was being marched back past us, you know? And we also, after the war at Regensburg, we set up a primitive defense, and we took care of a uh, POW cage for a while there. But we had, we had built up so many points of what we went through that we were scheduled to come home pretty quick. Because a lot of our with outfits was going to go to Korea. But we, you know, we had enough to come home. That's why we came home so soon. How did you come home from Europe, and from where did you leave? La Havre. We left from La Havre. And that's in come France? In, yeah. Come home on a ship, the USS Sea Tiger. Not the same thing as the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, no, no. And Tell us uh, the difference. And we had, <laughs> yes. And we, it was his 13th trip across, which 13 isn't too good with some people. We had an awful storm. No one was allowed on deck. 
but I snuck up on it one of the stairwells because I didn't like it down below. I was all right on top, you know. But if I had to go down below, I'd rush down and get my bunk, you know. And we uh, we would take water right on top of the deck. Just she would lay on her side, and we'd get up on top of these swells. The prop would be in the air, and the swell was gonna swell was gonna break in half when it went down, you know. But we made it. We made it back. We we pull in and. Uh, uh, Fort Patrick Henry. We were supposed to come in New York, but something got messed up. So, but going over to Queen Elizabeth, that was, we slept in what was the theater. One bunk on top of the other, one bunk on top of the other, you know. And a lot of fellas even got sick on that ship, but I didn't. But uh, some fellas really got sick and they didn't eat all the way across, you know. And when it got a little rough, I mean, but not like this little guy. And it, the fellas be down on the bottom deck eating at these, just stand up at these tables, like, you know, and stuff would fly right off of the tables. And guys were so sick, they'd sit on one john and they were throwing up in the other one. <laughs> and uh, did, did you get better food then? even though people didn't feel like it. Well, the English didn't feed us too well mm -hmm. going over, you know. No scones or anything good. A lot of rabbit and stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did the, did you have contact with any of the English people in their communities? Oh, yes, because we lived right in, some of them in the homes, and like I say, I slept in the rear of a church, small church, you know. Well, now, but they were nice to us. Now tell us what brought you to live in different homes. Well, because there was no camps there, you know, they were just providing for us. Now, had the people abandoned their homes, or no. were they, they there did, and they took you in? in yeah, or? some of them took you in, and some of them had, did abandon their homes, you know, to move in with others so some of our fellows could, you know, sleep in. We were, we were spread all over, I mean, you know, it just didn't, we weren't in a, you know, our whole battalion range in there, you know. We made out fine. Was it nicer then when you were in a home? Were you given a bed and you had to well, trust each other? Or were you given a yeah, meal? Yeah, pretty or? much, you know, pretty much. But it was, you know, strictly black out there when we got there, too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, just, were there German raids uh, while you were over there? No. No, no buzz not, bomb activity? Not near, not near us, you know. No, there wasn't. No, no, we, just, we didn't have to go through any of that. But those. Those people did, you know, they really, but they were good to us, very good, you know, yeah. So. Now your trip back to the United States, were the, was there any danger from submarines this time as compared to when you went over on the no. Queen Elizabeth? No, was, was it much more peaceful? Much more did you peaceful. travel in convoys going no, home? No, no, no. Your, your ship was solely on its yeah, own going yeah. back? Much smaller ship, but uh, much rougher one. <laughs> yeah. Now, were you able to uh, hear about the, the defeat of uh, the enemy over in Europe? Was there a celebration uh, of any kind amongst the men? Well, you know, we heard it was over. It was over, and we were still there doing, uh, taking care of prisoners, and we're also doing. Uh, some MP work around, you know, non fraternization you know. You now, for an MP, that's military mm -hmm. policemen. Yeah, right. But well, we were doing patrolling on the river and then on the Danube and things like that, you know, just to keep things, like I say, we set up a primitive defense there, you know, till we were ready to ship out. And then we went to these tents down by the coast and they had a, all different, uh, these Camps were all named different, but, oh, about cigarettes. Camp Lucky Strike and oh. tents and all that, you know, yeah. So, but. Did you have any opportunity to have any kind of entertainment from the USO? No, None I didn't. Whatsoever. I didn't see any, you know. No. We had, uh, uh, 
one time there they came and gave us the girls gave us some donuts and that that was it you know that I had seen you know mm. of course some other we were spread out or some others might have seen more different things than I did you know but all in all it was over with you were fortunate we, to survive. We done what we were sent to do. Don't begrudge it. No. Then we took care of those these German people. So we turn around, put the country back on their feet. Then they hated us. Mm -hmm. That's what happens in these wars. Mm -hmm. You know, we put them all back in business and they don't like us anymore. Now when you returned back to the States, what kind of reception did you get? Uh, were the people friendly towards you? Uh, what about processing out? And well, processing, I come out of Fort Dix. I had a nice three-quarter length Mackinac I wanted to keep to take home. They took it away from me issued me a brand new long wool overcoat, which I've never worn. I still have it packed, packed away. Now why, you know, issue me something like that when some other fella could use it, but that's just the way it comes. And then got discharged from there, I believe it was nine o'clock at night on that date. I remember it was on a Halloween. Fella, a bunch of us, Hired a uh, limo, went over to New York. Most of our fellows were from New York, Long Island. And Quite New a York few City. were from upstate. They always called us the apple knockers. And we, uh, I waited for a train, I come home. When I come home, really, I had nothing against the way they greet the boys today, but the only one who knew we, I was home was my family. Did you, know? you, while you were over there, did you get mail on a regular basis or any we were, kinds of packages we from home? We would get mail. Yeah, my mom would send us packages, you know. <clears throat> did you get special uh, homemade goodies or what sort of things did they send yeah, you? So it's, well, my mother used to send a lot of things of salami and things like that, you know. And I bet you were the most popular guy when that came. Well, I'm not the only one got this stuff. A lot of these Jewish boys, we had quite a few good Jewish boys, and they got a lot of Jewish food, which I wound up liking, which I never had before, because we shared everything. Mm -hmm. We shared everything we did, you know. And uh, like I say, great experience. And but we, after the war, and my my uh, battalion, we had they had a couple reunions. Not the whole battalion, it was just my battery in New York City. But I'd come home, I didn't have the money, and I couldn't afford to go to New York City. You know, to enjoy it. But I had one, two friends that came up to see me once in a while, you know. But then the only fellas I had seen since I got out of service. On your processing out, how did you get home? Did you come back to the Albany area? Oh, yes, I came back you were home. Come home on a train, you know, you all Where were you Union living? State. Where I was living in Colony. Colony at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And your matter. family knew you were coming? Yes. Okay. I think so. But my girlfriend was mad. She didn't know I was coming at the time. <laughs> and she was down there waiting for me at the station, and I was home because she had been working, you know. Oh, so she must have known you were coming. So I, yeah. There, yeah. She never let me forget that, you know. So, <laughs> but then I had neighbors to come to see me, where my parents lived, where I lived then, you know, mm -hmm. to congratulate me and everything. But and how there was, was no that? no big to do, you know. Which is all right. Well, didn't you, you know? have a nice special dinner uh, one of those? Oh, my days? mom, my mom was a great cook. Great I cook. bet it was great to have that food. She had great recipes in her head, but never wrote them down. You know, great. I had great, a great family. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, uh, 
I understand now when you got out of the service, you went back to work for the New York yes, Central? Yes, I did. I'm did they there. hold the job open for you? Oh, or? yes. Oh, yes. I did, yeah. Hold <laughs> the job open for me, yeah. And uh, then you spent the rest of your working life working for them? No. Oh. I spent, I finished my apprenticeship there in <clears throat> electrical in the West Albany shops. That's where I worked. And I, uh, so when they closed up, the motive power, what they call motive power, was the locomotive, that's where I worked. And they also had what they call the car department, where the, the cars were up there, you know, a different department. So I went to, the motor power shut down first. I got a job at the, up at the coach yards up there. I worked up there on electrical work. I worked on computer, commuter cars from New York City. <clears throat> and then when that shut down, I went to work to Selkirk, down the old roundhouse down there, just part time. I wanted to work, I needed a job. And I also worked the rental coach yards, which was 50 days. I might have worked the rental coach yards eight to four, because they always filled the jobs. And I might have to been down to Selkirk at four in the afternoon to 12 at night. Or I might have been down to Selkirk 12 midnight to eight in the morning, be back over to Selkirk, different, different divisions, but I had to do that to get a living. I wouldn't even come home sometimes. I'd just go from one place to the other. Of course, the money wasn't big. I have check stubs yet from the railroad. We got paid every two weeks. I would bring home 50-some dollars. What year would that of course, have been? That was in uh, 50, well, I got out in 45, mm -hmm. 46, 47. And uh, of course, things were much cheaper then, you know. But uh, I survived. My wife and I got married. We had, didn't have no money. Got married. Our first apartment was $65 a month. That was heated. And But we had a refrigerator, icebox, mm -hmm. you know. Later on, landlord got a a refrigerator when they first started making them again. And that's the uh, way it's been. My wife and I have mm -hmm. been married 61 years. We have one daughter, never could have any other children. I have two great grandchildren and two grandchildren. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost our daughter at a young age, 37, with cancer. So we've been pretty much taking care of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. We haven't gone on a vacation because we are just stay at home. We had moved up on a farm in Gillen to take, help take care of her parents. And we just work on a farm. And I also worked for the railroad with a seven-day-a-week job making hay, we had livestock and everything, and they, mm -hmm. we just never went on a vacation. Now, uh, but we don't, we don't regret it. Now, you did know. you have any opportunities for <clears throat> reunions or getting together on an occasion with any of the old buddies? No. No. You just that one. The you only thing is I, now, I never joined American Legion or Veterans of Foreign Wars because I was always busy I didn't believe on belonging to something which I couldn't participate. Mm -hmm. But I do belong to the Battle of the Bulge, Chapter 49. We have a great bunch of guys. We even take, now we take associate members because we're not all going to be here forever. We even have Vietnam vets. Matter of fact, he's a, one is our vice president and our, our secretary, our financial secretary, the associate member. You can't get the old boys to do things. 
I'm the guy to throw them out if they don't behave. I take care of the flags, the banners, and everything. And our president right now is uh, Battle of Bones. But now, like I say, last year our president was a Navy man. <clears throat> so we have permission from New York, from New York, from Washington, the headquarters of the Battle of the Bulls, that our, our treasure can carry on our chapter when we are all gone, which they accepted and we accepted because our boy that takes care of our money, I don't know if you know him, William, W-A-L-I-E-N, no, Gregory? No. He has the World War II equipment. He provides us with things and parades. He has 20 mobile pieces, tanks, half tracks, weapons carriers, all kinds of equipment, all restored, strictly World War II. He goes over to other countries. They're loaded with stuff in these warehouses. And he buys the stuff and has it shipped over here. He's a great man. He does great for us. What we're looking for, we can't seem to get the help. We want a museum of our own just for our chapter because I have stuff. All the other fellows have stuff that we want to put in this museum, that we can keep his stuff inside. What are some of the items that you have, that you collected yourself? I have German rifles. I have a German officer's hat, a pair of officer's boots. I have many bayonets and dress knives. And quite a few other things I have. Were any of these souvenirs brought back from the, the war zone? Yes, I sent them back. Mm -hmm. When I was in, uh, when we was in a PW cage, I had a fellow, a prisoner there, made these boxes long enough for I got the slip for permission and everything to send this home. He could only send just a certain length. I had three. German rifles. One's a sniper rifle, two of the others are larger. So I had to cut the stock off under the front band, which is, don't hurt it, but you can't notice it today because I have it all back together. And that's the way I sent all this stuff mm -hmm. home. Interesting. You could, so what uh, is the uh, purpose of your little chapter here? Is it just to keep the memory alive and let yes. people know what went yes. on? Like yes. Your ultimate goal well, is we to have, have a museum. We have people, we have luncheons. Every three months we have a luncheon at the Century House. Mm -hmm. We have speakers, people, speakers. And we have, uh, like, this month, the 16th, that's always our luncheon date for the first Battle of the Bulls regardless of what day of the week it is, which is on a Sunday this year, but it's always on the 16th. Mm -hmm. but we have it every three months. You have we very, have the Century House. Yep, do you have very many uh, and we members? Have this, we have a speaker, young, well, she isn't young now, a lady that was, I believe, five or nine years old during the war. She's from Germany. She's going to speak at this luncheon. Mm -hmm. We also have three fellas that goes around to schools with a lot of equipment, can't take guns or anything like that. They have an hour, a little over an hour, that they spend with the kids mm -hmm. and they get called back to schools and organizations and they're available anytime. Have Here you ever gone over to the Homefront Cafe in Altamont? Have they? Have you? Oh, yes. 
So you're yeah. quite familiar with the... Oh, yeah. She's mm -hmm. great. She certainly is. She's great, you know? And we also had a good display down at the Justice Department, where the uh, uh, Vietnam, Vietnam Memorial. Memorial. Yeah. Bob Allen, he's head of that down there. Do you know Bob Allen? No, I don't know. We might by sight. He, uh, he has charge of that down there and set all these things up. We had, let's see, let me see, years ago, four years ago. We had a whole display down there also of our stuff, you know. Just a, a lot of fellas have things that we can display, you know. That's why we'd mm -hmm. like to get a place of our own, just to, to yeah. you know. Sounds like To you. call our own, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, things are tough to, to find a place, you know. But we have, like I say, we have this gentleman that has the equipment, and he does great for us, I'm telling you. Nice guy. So, and if you know of anybody who would like to be associate member, <laughs> we take associate member, women also. We have women as associate members, you know. But it's kind of tough with some, like some associate members because we have our luncheons like on a Tuesday normally. And they can't, you know, make it. You can't blame them, not taking their mm -hmm. thing. But there's a lot of people that's interested in joining. We have quite a few people. Okay, that so. sounds like a good organization. And is there anything else you'd like to tell us uh, before well, we... No, really, but I appreciate you doing this. Okay. Well, we thank you very and much for well, doing thank this you. and uh, for serving our country. Thank you. Well, thank you very much.